I'm going to make a video on this now, so here we go. This is how you rotate a portion of audio by 90 degrees. First of all, you need to consider how long the piece of audio that you want to rotate will be. So for example here, let's say I want to rotate 8 seconds of audio. Cool, 8 seconds. Great, that's awesome. I'm going to generate a chirp from 1 hertz to my Nyquist frequency, which is 24,000 hertz, over 8 seconds. I'll generate that, export this, sine sweep lin, because it's a linear sine sweep from 1 hertz to 24,000 with uh, a constant amplitude. Cool. Now, I'm going to get a convolver, stick that on here, set the dry to zero and the wet to 100%. I'm going to get my sine sweep linear. And I'm just going to check the gain of it because this gets quite loud. Okay, cool. Now, gain is very important because it, convolvers tend to fucking be stupidly loud. And, uh, well, if you have a signal like this. Okay, so we went from a range from 1 hertz to, to Nyquist. So I have a frequency shifter here. I quickly just made this one in. in patcher because uh, frequency shifter from kilohertz only goes up and down by 5 kilohertz and I need 24 kilohertz of range uh, the thing here so if it's like up 100% all these will be 5k this will be 4k this makes it go to in total up to 24,000 so that's what I have there um, so you need to automate this to match the reverse of what your uh, impulse response is doing so we start at 24 we start at plus 24,000 and we end at zero and what I like to do here is actually make this continue all the way down doubly because you will have uh, a whole eight seconds of latency or however long your reversal or your rotation part is going to be. The, the latency will be equal to how long you are rotating, how long of a bit of audio you're rotating or whatever. Then you simply duplicate your impulse response right afterwards and now you have a thing that will flip or not flip that will rotate your audio so here's what that sounds like first we need to go through the eight seconds of latency that we have here and i hope this isn't going to be too loud as you can see that has rotated <laughs> whatever you see because you can see the drums and stuff. I should be using a linear spectrum, actually. Let me go fix that in my script set settings. As you can see, you can basically see here, this has been rotated by 90 degrees. You see the beginning of the file, the, you see the beginning of the audio here. You can, you can see all the drums and stuff in here. It's a bit louder than it should be, though. I'll just put it down by like 8 decibels or something. But that's how you go. That's how, that's how you do it. Now for fun, I'm just going to rotate audio. I'm going to rotate the audio multiple times. So first I'm going to record out this normally. It will have this weird at the end here. I'm going to drag this in, compensate its latency, put that on track six, and then I'm going to rotate it again. So rotating twice, 90 degrees, basically flips it upside down. So what we're going to see here is that the whole spectrum has flipped upside down completely. And that's exactly what we see. <laughs> it's also in reverse, mind you. So if we look at the spectrogram of this by enabling that, you can see we've basically flipped whatever was up here. Show this in spectrum. Look at that. That's like a perfect upside down replica of, oh, and reversed, by the way. So you can see, you can see this kick happens here and this kick is upside down now, uh, meaning that it's ringing out really high, right near Nyquist frequency, right near whatever we put there. And now I will rotate it again. Basically the first one we did and reversed. So now this is three rotations in. If we do one more rotation, this shall be back, almost back to normal. It is a bit of a lossy process, maybe because the convolution has to start at one hertz, not zero. Because it can't really, math doesn't work that way. But let's see what happens here. <laughs> It sounds a bit, uh, sounds a bit high past, except for the beginning. You get the bass in at the start. 
but it quickly goes away. I don't know exactly why that is. Maybe because it's flawed what I'm doing. But this has been rotated four times. Spectrally rotated four times. You can do a lot of interesting things with it, but now let's compare it to whatever we had here. I want to do a phase inversion comparison. So I'm going to put this on these both on track seven. I'm going to invert this one. Okay, I see some spectral lines, which means that there's like a bit, there's a few lines in here, which means it's not exactly perfect. There's always going to be some weird phase. Okay, cool. That's noted. <clears throat> but now you have it. Now you got this stuff. That's cool. That's, that's rotating by 90 degrees in a nutshell. So remember, you just need to get the length of your thing. Eight seconds in this case. You generate a linear sine sweep for eight seconds. You use that the convolution, the convolution, 100% wet. Then you get your shifter and you make the inverse of that for that period. And just to be safe, maybe do this afterwards. You see what this is doing in the automation. And then you apply the same convolution a second time. And that basically rotates it by 90 degrees. But you will have this much latency and it'll play in here. Just be ready for that. So that's how you do it. Yeah, that's crazy.